particular show because the original guy who was running it screwed it up and you had to take it over. Now, I know you had issues with, at, at the time, your women's champion, Christina Marie, where you asked her about taking a pay cut and she said no. Um, now, yeah, I had no, listen, I had no issues with Christina. When she said no, I paid her what, what she asked for. Okay. And yeah. I, matter of fact, since, since I used Christina, I've always paid her exactly what I paid her from the beginning. So mm-hmm. I don't know where it is that I cut her pay. Well, nobody said you, no, no, there was never a claim that you cut her pay. I was told that you asked her to take a pay cut prior to the show. She said no. And then the day of the show, you asked her to take a pay cut again. And she said no. No, no. That definitely is not true. If I asked her once, why would I, and she said no, why would I ask her again? Why not? You got nothing nothing to lose. I had no. I had the email that shows you where she said no, and I said fine. That was it. So why you know? why is she why did she leave the company? Well, one I didn't know she left the company, but uh, we didn't we, we didn't use her. She said she was booked on the next show. She thought she was losing the title that night. We never told her she was losing the title. All right. No, listen. No one ever heard of Christina Marie before she was in the chick fight. That's a fact. She only had a handful of matches. She was trained by Shockwave the Robot. She came up to our shows a few times with Shockwave when he was booked and without him a couple times just to help set up the ring. And then I put her in that women's super eight. After that, she got booked everywhere. That is fact. Okay. Yeah. She only had. I, I don't know. Of I don't know how fact that is because we've used it before you. I, it's definitely. And fact. I'm the one that actually recommended her when you put up. Who would you like to see in the Super Eight? And I'm the one that put Christina Marie's name on there. No, I had I had her book right away. Okay. And I mean, I could go back actually and get the exact date <laughs> of when I booked right. her. Well, I'm just saying that I obviously heard of her before you put her on your show, and Women of Warriors used her already. Well, she's from the New York area. She's had a handful of matches. Right. That so I'm just, again, but with this day and age of internet and access to be able to watch YouTube videos, to watch all, all these women's programs, put their video up and stuff like that, it's almost impossible for people in certain areas not to know who a local talent is. But now she, listen, she, she's working for PPW. They had the same dates as us. It's closer for her. And she claimed she was getting more money from them. And they got names on the show. So she chose them. Okay. So now you're going to go into your your Super your super 8 Women's Tournament uh, for the third straight year and, and no champion. Right. Fourth year. Fourth year. Well, this is your this is your fourth year in a row with no champion, or your third year in a row with no champion. Oh, uh, I thought you meant just the no, 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 oh. not the, not the tournament itself. Yeah. Just the third year in a row, right. you're going to go in without a champion. Exactly. You don't think that's an issue? No, I mean, I I think the I'm trying to think uh, the first one. I think it was when Jesse K was hurt. Um. Well, your first your first was, winner was Tessa Blanchard. Right, and she had won the belt because I think Jesse was the champion at the time and got hurt. So that was the first one. Mm-hmm. The second one was Deanna Perazzo. Right, and I can't remember if she won it there or was already the champion. I, I can't remember that. But and then she won the third one also. Right, but she was back already the champ. She was already the champion at that point. Right. And then, and, your, then, uh, and then your fourth one was then, Karen Q. Right. And the reason there was no champion there is because Deanna, I guess, at that point she had vacated the title. We didn't have her drop the title to anyone. And she thought she was going to be signed by WWE. So she vacated the title, and then we just kept the title. When they won the tournament, they won the trophy and the belt. And her... Friend Karen won that championship and the tournament. Okay. Now, 
why why after the fact with Deanna and and Karen there's just so much drama and controversy that was surrounding that after Deanna left you, you kind of talked a little shit about her oh yeah yeah I did I told the truth but why listen I pushed I pushed Deanna all the way she won back to back tournaments mm-hmm she didn't wing them on her own. I mean, is she good? Yeah, I think she's good. She didn't, not, in wrestling, nobody wins the title. The promoter chooses who's going to win. Right. Nobody, they they don't a, actually win that title. It's a prop. You know I, what I, I mean? I understand that. But anyway, I, I put Deanna more than anyone. I wanted to put her in the men's parade. I would have had her win that too. But she didn't want to wrestle men, you know? But... I would have given her the, the men's championship. That's how much I like Bianca. But towards the end, I'll tell you what, get, uh, her getting ready, first of all, they came to that last Super 8. Both of them looked like they just woke up. All right, she, she, We had to tell her six times about coming out for pictures or whatever. And she's back there doing her hair, taking her good old time. Meanwhile, all the other girls are ready, waiting on her. You know, she was now a superstar. So, and she was unhappy that that we had her vacate the title instead of putting Karen over. She wanted Karen. She wanted Karen as champion. And I didn't want that. She didn't like that. And then even in the last in the last tournament, I was joking around, but I, I told her she, I was going to put her over again for the third time, which I wouldn't have. Because that would have been overkill. Right. But she she was like, well, if Karen doesn't win, win win this tournament, you know, I would tell her never work for you again or whatever. Like, I mean, she, because they were close. Listen, I still like Deanna right now. I'm glad she's in WWE. I hope she does great there. But why, why would you slam her and tell whoever that's, was listening that... There's a, there's a reason why she's not signed with WWE, and now you know why Damian Adams dumped her. Why would you say that's that? What the boss, that's what the boss does. That's just, that's just the way I am. I'm exactly like that in real life. That's just the way I am. But if and you do stuff time. like this, you can't complain why people would talk about you. But Yeah, but the thing is, is I don't care what people talk about me. You know what? If they're talking about me, they're leaving someone else alone. I can handle myself. I don't care if they talk about me, if they like me or not. Half those guys don't like me. As long as they get paid and I push them, that's all they care about. So You know what Jim Tetner told me when he sold me the company? As much as he did for those guys, he said, if I was on fire, those guys wouldn't piss on me. And he did a lot for those guys. Okay. But he knew, he knew those guys didn't give a shit about him. That's just the way it is in wrestling. I don't disagree there, but I, I have to disagree that, you know, you're sitting there telling me that you don't care what people say about you, but no, I don't. you went on your radio show two straight weeks and were questioning why people have the need to talk about you. <laughs> no, I you're, just contra- you're just contradicting no. yourself. Nah, I don't. Listen, if you think that I get upset over anything in wrestling, Believe me, you're crazy. I don't lose a, a minute's sleep on wrestling. So I you, mean, you think, you think it's normal? So you think it's normal to to the shit on, in this case, Deanna, and then shit on students from Monster Factory, shit on Danny Cage, and what? Why? Why? What do you? What? What comes out of this? What do you think? What positive comes out of that? Well, you know, listen, whenever I talk about stuff, it's always the truth. There's guys from that went to that monster factory like Eric Martin. Let me tell you something about Eric Martin. He came in. Tell you what, he, he paid his uh, tuition. He paid full tuition, trained with us. We pushed him. We had him in main events. He was always on the poster. Since he's been a monster factory, I haven't seen him on one poster. I don't, they don't even mention him, and he kisses Danny Cage's ass. And the thing is, is after he paid us, he went over to pay them. I think that was a slap in the face to the trainer that trained him 
saying that, well, you didn't train me enough. Now I need more training. But you know what? Mike Keener didn't care that, that he went over there. He pushed for it. Oh, no, go, go. Daniel, get you in WWE. Well, if somebody's silly enough and naive ah, enough to believe like that. You, it, seems like you, it seems like you like a lot of the people that I don't like. Is there a reason for that? Or? I, obviously, I, I've never met Danny Cage in person. I'm just bringing up things that were put out there that I guess you were in the middle of controversy-wise. And but what does, listen, what does Danny Cage, Danny Cage has had maybe five matches his whole life. What does he know? What qualifies him as a trainer? Now listen, I wrestled for two years. Am I a trainer? No. Would I train guys? No. I had somebody else train them. But this guy actually thinks he's a real trainer. Does he even work out? No. Let me tell you something. I'm older than half them guys, more than everybody in the locker room. And I probably bench more than all of them, okay? That's a fact. I bench 400 pounds, all right? I'd like to see any of those guys do what I did in the gym. I don't know what that has anything to do with this, but okay. Well, I think because actually guys that... Our wrestlers, they should work out. Like, when we try to use guys that look like wrestlers, look at Kokoa, he's built. He looks like a wrestler. Right. Ricky Martinez, he looks like a wrestler. Chris Wilde, he looks like a wrestler. You go on some of these other promotions, you know, Courageous Cruise. My son's bigger than him. He weighs 75 pounds. I mean, is he built like a wrestler? No. You know, you got backyarders, you know, uh, the Iron Bull, <laughs> Argus. You know, he, he, he's wrestling. He doesn't look like he ever touched a weight in his life. Well, if you're, what if about, you're what a, about a guy like Joe? What about a guy like Joey Janela? He doesn't look like a wrestler, but yet he's probably one of the most used household names in the Northeast Indie Circuit. And you know why? Because he jumps off of buildings and goes through ta- flaming tables, and you know that kind of fan base wants to see that. You know that that. Uh, CZW, GCW, they want to see that hardcore stuff. They want to see blood. I don't think that's wrestling. I mean, are you a fan of that kind of wrestling? Personally, no. I'm not either. I don't think that's wrestling. Everybody, everybody's got their thing. Everybody likes, you know, whatever. Yeah, right. You know, some people hate I, women's wrestling. Me, I rather watch right. women's wrestling than men's wrestling. <laughs> if you notice, if you notice, a lot of the women's shows they don't draw. Yep. You know, somebody was just at one of the last uh, the last WSU shows. They said there was nobody there. Maybe fifty people tops. It's been dwindling down. Like a lot, I've seen one women's show that was six fans at the show. I believe six. it. It's a tough market. But, it, it really is. And the problem too, it's not even women's wrestling. It's all wrestling. There's too many. Last week there was five shows in Delaware. I mean, it's just too many. And then in the South Jersey area, you got you got CZW, you had GCW. I don't know if they're still doing shows around here. You got Monster Factory, you got Dog, you got Mawa, you got On Point, you got H2O. There's just too much wrestling. I mean, every weekend there's wrestling shows. That, Back in the day when Joe Goodhart was running TWA, there was like three promotions. That's it. I think it was him. Larry Sharp and Dennis and Rob Russell. That was it. There was no other promotions, and that's why they drew back in the day. Well, people want it, so people are supplying it. Um, they got to find new and creative ways to get people to show up to it. And with this day and I mean, age of social that, media, there's no excuse not to have fans show up to your to your uh, your building. Pictures don't lie. I've seen a lot of shows where. Some of them look like they're in basements. Some of them have maybe 30 people at the show, you know. I saw a show recently. It was in Bridgeton. There was maybe 20-some people there, tops. There's no way that the guy made any money, you know. So there are a lot of guys doing this, just, right. you know, because they want to they wanna be a part of the business or they want to hang out with wrestlers. I mean, I've been doing it for 10 years. If you think I've lost money every single month, I don't know. You know I don't, have that kind I don't of know what your finances are, so I have no idea. I'm not even gonna, wouldn't even question that. Uh, one thing. Well, I, I, I heard 
Thank you for saying you keep up the way news is money every show. How-